joining us today on for my talk on Ecolas. So I'm uh, Cordula Peters. Um, I currently work as a chef at Limebourne Opera House, um, but I'm of you. Um, uh, and thank you for joining us today on for my talk on Ecolas. So I'm uh, Cordula Peters. Um, I currently work as a chef at Limebourne Opera House, um, but I have this absolute passion for egg coddlers and have been doing um, research on egg coddlers for the last about, well, it really, I started my research actually during COVID. Um, it was a time when working in the hospitality industry was a bit difficult because everything was closed. So I, got a, I had to keep busy somehow. And um, one day I was making an egg coddler and it kind of just started with me questioning when were they actually invented? And kind of it all started from there and um, turned into quite a massive uh, research project over the last few years with several visits to uh, the Royal Museum at Royal Worcester and uh, various archives in uh, in London and uh, Bridge Library and Kew Gardens and, and whatnot to kind of figure out um, where it all started, how it started, uh, and so on. So um, I do apologize when I, if I look a little bit bundled up here, but I am indeed sitting outside um, at rather cold temperatures. I think it's like five degrees right now, uh, but I'm currently on holiday in Tuscany. So I'm joining you from Tuscany today um, and staying in a very uh, um, old uh, building with very thick stone walls. So the internet doesn't work inside, hence I'm sitting outside. Um, so uh, if my nose looks a bit red, it's because it's quite cold. Um, but uh, anyways, um, so thank you for joining me today. Um, as I said before, if you have any questions throughout my talk uh, that you want to ask for the Q&A later, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, Fiona um, and Kate will be monitoring the chat. Um, and so we can get to those questions after my talk for the Q&A. And with that, I am just going to start my talk. So. Um, like I said, I started researching Ecolas, um, so basically in 2020, so four years ago. Um, I have been coddling eggs all my life. I grew up with uh, coddled eggs. Um, so my parents had egg coddlers um, that they got as a present, um, um, you know, uh, basically uh, when they were quite young uh, and engaged. And um, so, uh, and as the kind of you know kids joined the family um me and my sisters um so you know my mom would get you know more egg coddlers so to make sure we all had uh, an egg coddler in the house and um they were quite a uh, kind of staple for you know uh maybe sunday brunch or birthday breakfast kind of you know special uh breakfast meals um for those my mom would make these coddled eggs and so i i grew up with them i had them all my life um, and uh, when I left home and, and moved abroad and, you know, at some point I first moved to America, found an egg coddler in an uh, antique shop and or, you know, secondhand shop and basically got myself an egg coddler because I felt like I needed to have one, uh, even living away from home and um, kind of have been, you know, continuing to coddle eggs um, for myself throughout the years. And like I said, uh, during, during the pandemic, as I was sitting in my uh, kitchen having a coddled egg for breakfast I just kind of started this uh these questionings uh these questions about coddled eggs and, and and who came up with the idea of an egg coddler um so my talk today is going to focus on the history of uh the egg coddler um where it was invented how it was invented why it was invented and then how it ended up at Royal Worcester um, there's a large part of of my research I'm not going to fit into the talk today because I could be talking for hours um, on this uh, subject, but I'm going to focus on that history um, and the connection specifically with Royal Worcester since this talk is for the Museum of Royal Worcester Winter Talk Series. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys for my PowerPoint presentation. One second. Here we go. Yeah, so there it is. Um, just some pop-ups here. Okay, so um, talk today um, is about egg coddlers. Um, and uh, here's a picture of some of my egg coddlers. This is a small portion of my, um, at this point, quite large collection. Um, but just, uh, there we go. So um, let's talk about, um, where the coddled egg or this concept of the coddled egg come from and how the coddled, uh, the egg coddler came about. Um, so to get into that, we kind of have to go back in time quite a bit. Um, 
and uh, goes back to how eggs were actually eaten uh, really during uh, Victorian times um, and before. So uh, this is uh, a quote here. Um, it's one of my favorite quotes on eggs um, from um, the Ladies' Home magazine from 1860. Um, and uh, this article goes on about eggs. So um, here it says, what a wretched thing, a badly cooked egg. Whether it be liquid as a lady's tear or as solid as a, a summer set sharp pudding, a dumpling, sorry. Um, so this is really this, this ongoing question. Um, what is the perfectly cooked egg? How should we eat an egg? How soft, how hot should it be? Should, should it be liquid like a lady's tear or should it be solid like a dumpling as in should it be hard boiled? So back then, um, hard boiled eggs were quite common. Um, and they were common food also uh, for uh, the working class. Um, these were this was food that maybe people took with them when they were working out in the fields um, in the countryside or, you know, when they were traveling and um, things like that. So there was this um, belief or, you know, if you wanted to be a bit more posh and upper class that um, hard boiled eggs, you know, are kind of working class. And if you eat a, 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 an egg at, the, at a nice set table, um, it really should be a soft egg. Um, also, uh, there was a very strong belief that hard boiled eggs are actually not really healthy for you in the sense that they are hard to digest, especially for children, especially for the sick, especially for the elderly. So the softer the egg, um, actually the better. Um, so, here is um, a excerpt from um, the Cottage Gardener, which was a kind of domestic uh, life kind of magazine written for housewives. And um, uh, in uh, this this particular issue is from eighteen fifty two. Um, and uh, in this uh, article, um, the the author talks about how to cook the perfect egg. This particular article was qu quoted in household magazines, um, cooking magazines for the next 20, 30, 40 years. So if you look at um, a magazine, so the, the um, previous quote I just showed you from the, from 1860 action at article, this article is also quoted. So um, a lot of authors keep going back to this article. This is how you cook the perfect egg. And um, so in this article, I'll, I'll, I'll read it quickly for you. Um, it says, an egg should not be boiled. Do not suppose that I advocate roasting it or that I'm about to inflict you with a dissertation on the reason or manners of the thing. An egg, I repeat, should not be boiled. It should only be scalded, Virgo coddled. Further, that, then the article goes into exactly how you coddle the egg, which I explain in a second. Um, and then uh, further down, it says, the yolk first owns the power of the caloric and will be even firmly set, while the white will be milky or at most tremulously gelatinous. And this is basically how eggs at the time in the 19th century were meant to be eaten. Um, if you wanted a nice, what we nowadays say, soft boiled egg. I have another article where uh, the author keeps saying, don't call it soft boiled, it's soft cooked because again, it should never be boiled. It should only ever be coddled. So the, the eggs that they ate at the time were actually very, very soft, um, way softer than we eat them today. Um, so again, it's about this gelatinous egg white, which is normally what people nowadays kind of frown upon. Um, but back then, this is how um, they wanted their soft boiled eggs. It was supposed to, it was supposedly the, easiest way to digest an egg um, and this belief held into the 20th century so um, I have um, quite a few uh, cookbooks or little pamphlets from health ministry and so on and so forth talking about how the egg um, should be never boiled never hard boiled always soft boiled again especially when given to children and to the elderly um, and should be really really soft and um, so the way they these eggs were cooked was not cooking them like we do today in boiling water, but actually in what they called egg steamers or egg cookers, or it's sometimes also uh, called egg coddlers. And you have some pictures on the top of the screen on uh, on the left hand side um, where you see these drawings of of these egg cookers. So the idea here was, and I have 
an actual picture of one I have at home, um, that you would have a little light on the bottom, a little tea light, then you put the eggs into the, this uh, device, into this coddler or cooker or steamer, put the egg in in the shell, um, you pour steaming hot water over it, close it, and then you let it sit. So you're not actually boiling the egg, you're just letting it sit in really, really hot water, keeping the water hot through the light underneath. Um, and then letting it sit there. This way, the egg does actually get cooked and you can actually get a really nice, what we would consider nicely soft boiled egg this way as well. I've tried it. Um, but uh, if you take it out early enough, you can actually keep that gelatinous white, egg white, but the center will actually, the egg yolk will be cooked nicely. You will have that gelatinous egg white and then you can eat it. Um, and these devices here, they can be then put on the, uh, breakfast table or the dinner table and people can take their egg out at whatever time they want to eat it and at whatever softness or hardness they like it. The problem with these um, devices was that you were cooking the egg in its shell and again we're talking 19th century there is no refrigeration um, so eggs um, even though nowadays depending where you are um, can you can leave your eggs outside the fridge as well but back then also you didn't have vaccination for uh, chickens and they um, uh, or didn't have the same cleaning procedures of eggs like we do today so the big questions was always is the egg still good is the egg stale has the egg gone off um, also you know the potential of salmonella on the eggshell and so on and so forth so it was a big health concern especially considering that the eggs were not actually put into boiling water and therefore the eggshell also wasn't ultimately sterilized. So um, this is where the egg coddler, as we know it today, actually comes in. So the first mention that I found on egg coddlers is actually um, from 1890, um, where a lady in Kansas in the US um, submitted a patent application for her egg coddler. So here you have, uh, she didn't call it a coddler, it was called an egg boiler or an egg cooker. Uh, Fanny Bryant uh, from Lincoln, Kansas, um, submitted this to the um, patent application office in the US um, and invented uh, what I, at this point, claim is the first egg coddler type thing that I have been able to find in any kind of um, patent applications, um, uh, books uh, in the US or anywhere. So uh, this is this is the first I could find. Um, it is very similar-ish uh, looking to what we know today, except you can see it doesn't have a foot. It cannot sit on its own. So these were actually done afterwards, put probably in an egg cup um, so people could eat um, their coddled egg. But the idea is still the same. You have a device uh, made out of porcelain, um, you put the egg in, you can screw the lid on, um, then with this um, handle, put it in hot water um, and, uh, you know, cook, cook your eggs. The idea here being, um, and she writes this um, in her application um, when she submitted it, excuse me, is, is really this idea of keeping the eggs safe. So she says, my invention is in the nature um, of... A device whereby eggs may be boiled or poached after breaking them in a suitable receptacle, whereby it is rendered possible to be absolutely assured that the egg is good before cooking it, and whereby it may be seasoned before cooking and inspected if desired, um, during the operation of cooking to ascertain whether it is sufficiently well done. So this this focus on making sure the egg is still good. Um, so this was really the primary purpose of her invention is we want soft boiled eggs or coddled eggs. We need to make sure that they are actually good eggs. Um, so this, this uh, uh, patent application was submitted in 1890 in the US. Um, I have not found any evidence that suggests that this was actually, these coddlers were actually ever made. Um, so I don't know if they were fabricated or not, or if she just submitted the patent, um, but what came of it, I have not found any evidence on that regard. A couple of years later, um, again in the US, um, we have another patent application from William R. Hill. Um, so William Hill, uh, he uh, lives in Syracuse, New York. 
um, and he submitted a patent application for um, an egg coddler uh, similar in design, again, with a, a stand that helps you put it into the cooking pot, although it looks a little bit awkward. The other one actually looked much more sturdy. Um, but he, his have actually little feet, so you can actually afterwards set them on the table. Um, and uh, he submitted uh, uh, this um, application 19, uh, in 1893, uh, the patent was issued then in 90, uh, later on in 93, um, and he called it, again, an egg cup and, or egg cooker. Um, and it's clear he is aware of the other uh, invention because um, he keeps mentioning that this is an improved egg cup or egg cooker. Um, so I'm, I'm very certain that he knew about uh, Fanny Bryant's um, original invention and just tried to make it better um, again, in this case, so you can actually set it on the table without having to, again, put it in another device. Um, and again, he focuses on this idea in his application that you can inspect the egg. And in his case, he very specifically mentions that you don't get any eggshell in your egg when you eat it. And again, considering that back then they didn't cook the eggs as much as we do today and potentially didn't have them ever really in boiling water, but just hot water. Um, this idea that you might have a dirty eggshell might have been more of a health issue than, you know, we would consider it uh, today. Um, so uh, here, uh, this is from his application. The great advantage of my invention consists of permitting the eggs to be served in the cup in which it was cooked, removed from its natural shell, thereby avoiding the custom of breaking the shell at the table and the liability of mixing pieces of the shell with the eater. Uh, eatable portions of the egg when soft boiled and also obliviates the necessity of putting the cooked egg in a cold cup or other cold dish on the table so that everything stays nice and hot and you have it as its own independent item uh, on the table. Um, just um, a, uh, a year later, um, William Hill um, again submitted another application for uh, another egg coddler type. So he realized that his invention with the fancy little feet and the little, you know, hanging it on this little stand wasn't maybe quite as practical as he was hoping it to be. So uh, less than a year later, he submitted an ap another application. Um, in this case, um, so he filed this as, again, an improved egg cup cooker. And um, again, with this... Um, uh, concept of making it safe um, and to make sure that the egg is sound uh, or is, is, is good. So to cook the egg, it is removed from the shell and if found perfectly sound, it is deposited in the cup. So again, he mentioned this like health aspect of cooking the egg. Um, and then you screw the lid on and put it in the in the water. And any of you who have their own egg coddlers, you will see that this design already very much looks like you know the royal worcester egg color that you might have sitting around except that the lid is a bit different but other than that this already looks quite mu very much like the egg color as we know it today so again this is the um, design the pattern from william hill from syracuse us and this is from 1894 um sorry uh he uh um, here it is from the actual um, uh, U.S. Gazette, which issues all the patents that were issued every year in the U.S. So this is from the Gazette from 1894. And here you can see uh, that uh, he already starts having a little design on it as well. Um, so uh, it's the Egg Cup by William R. Hill, Syracuse, New York, a signer to the Premier Egg Cup Company. Um, so... Here we also have this mentioning of the Premier Egg Com Cup Company, which I will come to back later. But so what we have here now is the first time mentioning an actual name for it that is beyond just egg cup, egg cooker, egg boiler. He calls it Premier Egg Cup. Um, and this will be important uh, later on. So uh, US patent for, by William Hill, uh, 1894. And here is um, originals from that time. Um, so these are Premier Cups um, after the design by William Hill. 
These are produced by a company in Syracuse, New York, where he was from, which was called Syracuse China. Uh, Syracuse China was a uh, one of the first big China factories in the U.S. Um, and uh, they uh, they took on the contract with William Hill and des decided to make his premier egg cups. Um, and uh, produced them at the time. They had a lot of financial problems due to the economic downturn at the time in the US um, and other issues like unionization, worker strikes and so on and so forth. Um, so they took on this contract and um, making these uh, Premier Egg Cups actually helped them financially a lot and kind of saved the company at the time. Um, so they started making these. And again, you can see that these might look quite similar to what you have sitting at home. Um, and some of you have older Royal Worcester um, coddlers, maybe you're still from the time it was Granger. Um, you will have ones that look exactly the same, different patterns, but with the same type of lid, same type of design. The reason for that is that um, during that time, 1894-1895, as William Hill had submitted his patent, he also submitted the patents for the design, not only in the US, but also in the UK, in France, in Canada, um, and uh, other places in Europe. So we, um, there are patent applications for his design uh, in a lot of countries kind of throughout the world at the time. Um, and he really ha clearly had the intention of bringing the egg cup uh, to the world. Um, Syracuse, China, um, because they were establishing themselves as a major China factory, they spent a lot of time traveling to France and to the UK at the time to learn from the China, old China factories here, Royal Worcester being one of them, Coalport being another, uh, some companies in France as well, um, to learn from them how to really improve their China that they were making. And in that time, clearly there was some exchange also between factories in the UK, William Hill and his premier egg cup company, because uh, we'll find um, that uh, he actually brings the Premier Egg Cup company to the UK. Here, um, just uh, I'm going to throw that in a little ad from that time. So this is from circa 1895. This is a little newspaper clip out, a little ad in the US in a, in a uh, newspaper for this Premier Egg Cup. And again, you have this focus on bad eggs versus good eggs, checking your eggs. So you'll see it says on the, in the illustration under the hand, no bad eggs. Um, and again, boil them in these cups in place of shells, um, no shells, no muss, no fuss. So it's just making it safe, making it easy to eat. Uh, here's another ad as well from that time, kind of with the same message in there. It's always about making it safe. So here you have, uh, uh, you know, no uncertainty, no muss, no fuss, um, always this, make sure your eggs are good. So back to the Premier Egg Company, um, Egg Cup Company, sorry. So this is um, Hill's application in the UK to register his company, the Premier Egg Cup Company. Um, so I found this at Kew Gardens um, in, the, in the archives there where they have all these old uh, documents. So here they established, um, him and several other people established or tried to establish the Premier, Premier Egg Cup company in the UK. Um, again, showing that they have the pattern uh, in the US, Canada, Britain, France, um, and that they wanna produce egg cups after his design in the UK. This application is from June 27, uh, 1895. Um, and only a couple months later, on October 11th, 1895, um, it, in the same folder, basically, at Kew Gardens, uh, you'll find this letter, which is then actually them asking for uh, the removal of this company that they just founded from the register. So they just registered the company. Now they removed uh, themselves again from the uh, reg uh, register uh, and shut down their company saying they actually never sold any, they didn't make any egg cups, they didn't sell any premier egg cups, didn't make any money, so the company is closed again. I think what happened at that time, again, because Syracuse China was working with Royal Worcester um, or had, was in discussion with them about improving their China and learning from them, at some point there must have been a discussion, can you make these for us? So instead of us having our own company, we let you use our pattern and you make them. 
What I have not found yet is any official documentation about this exchange. Um, so I'm still looking um, uh, in the in the archives at Royal Worcester if I can find anything um, or other places like Hugh Gardens to find anything about this connection between when this conversation between William Hill and Royal Worcester started. What we do know, though, is that shortly after Royal Worcester is making egg coddlers like this one, exactly according to the design by William Hill. So here we have an egg coddler uh, from 1897, um, by, made by Royal um, China Worcester, uh, Royal China Works in Worcester. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see, it's exactly the same design, um, except that now it has the pattern, you know, from Granger uh, that you can find in the Granger pattern books. Um, at the Museum of Royal Worcester Archives. So they are putting their own patterns on there, no longer the patterns that um, uh, William Hill designed, but they're putting their own spin on it with their own pattern design. But other than that, it's exactly the same. The dimension are pretty much exactly uh, the same. So when you put them next to each other, they don't really look any different. Um, what, what I get a lot is, um, what I see a lot is people referring to Royal Worcester coddlers and under some of the older Royal Worcester coddlers underneath, on the bottom, you have a, what looks like a pattern number or registration number. And a lot of people think that this is a, um, the pattern number for the egg coddler and that Royal Worcester actually held the pattern or potentially invented the egg coddler and so forth. This is actually not true. What this registration number is for is a very small design feature that Royal Worcester actually added to the egg color that uh, William Hill didn't have. So what you have in William Hill design is just this flat um, lid. What Royal Worcester added in 1910 is actually the round hoop on top of the lid. This is actually what Royal Worcester um, registered as a design with the patent um, office. So this is a registered design um, with the registration number 561564, um, which is written on the bottom of a lot of Royal Worcester, older Royal Worcester coddlers. This refers simply to the little hoop. So William Hill, he is the one who designed and patented the coddler. Royal Worcester are the ones that um, registered the design for the little hoop on, on the um, on the lid. Um, again, this uh, application sits in Kew Gardens in the, in the archives there. Um, here's from the time, just a little uh, premier egg cup advertisement from Royal Worcester. And you can see there's no mention of the word coddling yet. Um, they still call it the premier egg cup. So they took that name from William Hill, added it to their um, coddler design and still called it premier egg cup. Um, and then have the little um, ad for that. Um, here is one of these very early ones. So this one is from 1926. Um, still, so, uh, this one is plain white. So kind of like the one on the um, registration application for the lid. And you see the little lid with the um, little hoop added to it. Then here we have a very old famous uh, Royal Worcester design, um, Worcester Willow, um, which they added very early on to some of the coddlers. Um, once uh, uh, they kind of started making them like this. So this is one from 1920, 1929 um, with a Worcester Willow uh, design on it. Um, I started looking really at um, kind of the, how, um, you know, the egg coddlers evolved then at Royal Worcester, one of the earliest um, registered um, uh, designs uh, that goes on the coddler or that I could find in the pattern books is um, Peking, uh, which was um, a very early kind of pattern. So uh, this was one of the few patterns that Royal Worcester actually registered with the registration office um, that no other company could use that pattern. Um, they didn't do that with a lot of patterns, but with, with some, and this was definitely one of them. So um, again, you can find this in Kew Gardens in the archives. This is when they did um, registered the Peking design. Um, so this was, um, registered in 1912 um, and so when we look at the history again they designed the little hoop in 1910 1912 we have this registration for this pattern and then here's the little egg coddler with with the Peking uh, pattern um, and this is also then the first coddler that we find as a recorded 
Codler design uh, in the Royal Worcester pattern books in the archives at the Museum of Royal Worcester. So this is where they, Royal Worcester was very meticulous in recording all their patterns, um, uh, writing them down, giving them numbers, giving them names, um, recording exactly how they should be done, how they should be put on the porcelain uh, or crownware, or whatever. Um, so uh, it's it's a very, uh, very organized process. So the first codler you can find in any uh, of their pattern books is Peking as a design. Um, so this was clearly then uh, shortly after 1912, after they actually registered the design for it, they actually starting to put the um, Peking design officially into their manufacturing pattern books, we're going to mass produce this. Um, so these, this is actually um, uh, out of three different pattern books. Um, so we have pattern book number three, we have one of the workbooks, and then another workbook. So they had clearly they made these books and gave them to the different parts of the factory, wherever they were making different things. So people knew what they were doing. Um, so here we have, uh, again, Peking, which is design 386 as the first um, read, um, recorded Royal Worcester um, codler design, even though they were making codlers already beforehand, but they were then just made and not really recorded. Here we have the official pattern. We're gonna make loads of these. And as you can see, if you look on the picture on the bottom here, they're still calling it Premier Egg or Premier Egg Cup. So the name again is not Egg Codler, it's still Premier Egg Cup. Um, this is um, an ad uh, where we first actually find the word coddled um, attached to this device um, and to this way of cooking eggs. So this is an ad from circa 1936. Um, and there it says, it's still, they still call it Premier Egg Cup, but um, it says for coddling eggs. So this is where we finally have the word coddling actually mentioned somewhere. However, they're still not calling it egg coddler for many years to go um, in, in any of their ads or um, their, uh, their pattern books as well. Um, so here, I uh, just wanted to show, because uh, I love these, um, uh, some pages from the um, pattern books uh, at Royal Worcester, where you see all these drawings of the little um, egg coddlers with their little designs um, on there and how the designs are supposed to go on there. Um, and and how they are supposed to be made. Oops, sorry. Um, here's another page. Uh, this is from the workbook. Um, again, these are actually some of the rare, more rare coddlers that are actually um, parts of them hand painted um, designs. Um, and then here with the on the bottom, you see with the little transfers for the flowers. This was a process of how how they get their design on the porcelain. Um, is through these these transfers they were doing. Um, but again, you can see in the book, it just keeps saying Premier Egg, Premier Egg, Premier Egg. So we're still calling them Premier Egg Cups. Um, here, just to kind of you see the, um, the, the process and, and how then I also started identifying patterns or so how we can identify patterns. Um, here is um, uh, Roanoke, uh, a quite famous pattern by Royal Worcester. Um, and you see it in the pattern book um, with a uh, transfers and you see they actually have two different uh, flower transfers available for that uh, pattern, uh, which we do find on the codlers. So we know both of these codlers, even though they have different flowers are from the same, pa same pattern. Um, and again, we, it's called Premier Egg Cup uh, Roanoke Sprays. Um, here is another example uh, from the pattern book next to the actual codler. Um, so Premier Egg Cup, Clementine, that's the pattern and next to it then the little collar that, that goes with it. Um, so going through these pattern books, um, I spent quite a lot of time kind of going through and photographing all the patterns and really making sure that we know a lot of the names, but do we really actually have the correct pattern with the correct name? Um, so finding the actual hard evidence, here's the pattern with the name in the pattern book um, is really, really helpful and quite interesting. So um, for example, here um, with these egg coddlers, even though all three of them look fairly similar and very much the same, you would think they all actually belong to the same pattern. They actually do not. Um, while the, the one on the, uh, without the lid on the, on the left um, is clearly the one that you see up here in the 
pattern book uh, called Astral Sprays. Um, it's quite a famous uh, pattern of uh, Royal Worcester as well. Astral, very beautiful. And um, so that is definitely the flower from Astral. However, the other two actually belong to a different pattern altogether. It is very similar looking, um, but they actually belong to a pattern called Devon. Um, there is no Coddler um, design recorded in the pattern books for Devon, but there's um, the designs for plates, cups, and so on, where those flowers clearly belong to Devon and where they are um, applied to the Devon pattern. So they never show up in any of the astral um, pattern in the pattern books, but to Devon. So again, even though they all look very similar and go really, really well together, they are actually different patterns, um, astral and, and Devon. Um, then sometimes as I was doing my research, I had this problem where I would find a pattern and it's called Sylvia and I have nothing on there because they actually didn't stick the little transfer on there to show me what the pattern is. So I couldn't find any, uh, and it's it's blank in actually in, in pattern book number three, as well as in the workbooks, Sylvia is always blank. Um, so whoever was dealing with Sylvia um, didn't do their job and didn't actually put, put the pattern in there, um, but left it blank. So the big question was, what does Sylvia look like? Um, and uh, that took me three visits to figure out. On my third visit, I cracked the um, secret um, when I found these. So I had to actually look at plate designs at Royal Worcester. And I found finally, that, that took a little while, we found the right book um, where Sylvia is finally mentioned. And this is from 1985, um, 58, sorry, um, where we have a picture of Sylvia and a lot of you who have cuddlers at home might say this design looks awfully familiar, um, but we know it as woodland um, and uh, you're correct. Um, so it started off as Sylvia. This is the oldest um, kind of name for this design where you have this little green leaf with the yellow flower and the plate. In 1962, they made this specifically for Hyde Park Hotel and, um, and changed the name to Woodlands and later on also changed design a little bit, but all of a sudden Sylvia no longer existed and it was called Woodlands. And then another couple of years later, um, they, uh, in 1964, they changed the color, made it brown instead of green and called it Dorchester. Um, so you see a little bit of an evolution of patterns as well, um, where different patterns kind of have different names at different times. And sometimes it's a bit difficult to figure out, but. It is clear now what Sylvia looks like. So um, here you have kind of an evolution of all of them. So we have Sylvia here, the green leaf with a yellow flower, that's Sylvia. Dorchester, brown leaf with yellow flower. And then woodland, like I said, later changed where instead of just doing the little green leaf with a yellow flower, they actually took the design from the center of the plate originally, which is that big flower bouquet. And, and put that on the coddler. So we have the coddler, the large and the small for um, woodland, um, which is um, was produced in for many years and exists. Um, it's quite a common common design that you'll find. Um, but um, if anybody has this little one with the green leaf and the yellow flower, um, do know that you got Sylvia in your in your um, cupboard. Um, so. Uh, up until 1961, all we had was coddlers that were single um, egg coddlers. So they were quite small. You can fit exactly one egg in there, maybe a little bit of garnish and that's it. In 1961 is when they added another size to it, which was the large, which was for two eggs. Um, originally it was made um, for seven patterns, Dun Robin, Lavinia, Bactrinal, Valencia, Harvest Ring, Bermuth and Louise. Um, and so uh, I have a couple of them up here on the top. There's five of those designs, Louis Dunrow and Bachelor, Valencia and Harvest Ring. And then in the bottom, you see the difference in size. So for Valencia, you have the big one. Um, so that's a two egg coddler and then the small one, which is um, one egg coddler. So any of you who have uh, the two egg coddlers at home, which we also call uh, large or king size or, you know, has different names and um, know that uh, your coddler is definitely uh, from after 1961 because that's the first time they actually produced um, the large coddler so anything um, large of that size is from 1961 and later um, 
Then uh, they added another size to their codlers. Um, again, we have uh, in the pattern books and Gazette, Gazette timeline uh, set for that. Um, so, second, yeah. Um, so, sorry. So here we have uh, in 1973, uh, they introduced the meal codler. So this is this is a quite large large size codler. Um, uh, they call it also Maxime. So there they say it's for about um, three to four eggs. Um, and you can see the size. So this was the design mentioned in the pattern books with the cherries. This is from the Evesham, um, Evesham design, um, which you on the side you see an example of. And yeah, you see the different sizes um, from tiny to middle to, to really big. They do later in the 90s have another size that's kind of in between the Maxime and the large, which they call Jumbo, which is kind of an in-between size, which they made for a few of the patterns but these three are kind of the most common sizes you will find. Um, and again, if you have a coddler that is this big, um, you know it's made after 1973, because that's the first time we actually have mention of it. Um, here, just uh, put it as an example, um, just different kind of lit designs that you'll find over the years. Um, it's not always, uh, you can't really use it always to like determine age of a coddler. Um, because some of them do overlap. Um, these are all small little collars, but you'll see definitely the one from 1926 um, on the um, left-hand side. Um, also a bit of a different material, the collar as well as the lid. Um, then you have the one in the middle with Clementine as the pattern with a very kind of thin threads, um, which they made for quite a while. Normally those are the little bit oldest collars, and then you need to see a very new um, uh, co uh, coddler lid type um, with um, harvest, but that's from 1998. Um, so you kind of, you, you can use them a little bit, but the thin threads ones, they did make them throughout the years again and again. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a really old uh, coddler. However, the older ones all normally are very thin threaded, but they do make some younger ones that also are. So it's not always an indication, but here you can just see some different um, lid designs over the years um also what we have over the years the different ways of them designing how the lid fits on um from this uh, metal ring that uh, most of us know and probably have uh, to then uh, for a very short period of time they changed the metal to um, plastic and had this the one in the middle with this white plastic rim uh, this um, happened in the 70s so that was in 78 um, and you really they were really only produced for about two to three years um, and then disappeared again. But you still nowadays do find some patterns that were released in that time um, that are very common with these uh, plastic rims because that's when the design was released. That's when they made them. Um, and, you know, that's what at the time was sold. Uh, they didn't last very long because that plastic discolored quite quickly and became um, yellowish brown quite quickly. So um, for aesthetic reason, they actually stopped that. They went back to the metal rings. Um, and then in the uh, late 90s actually changed the design completely and um, did the threading within the actual porcelain cup and then have a little plastic ring inside. Um, I'll show that later when I make a coddle because I have one of those coddlers um, here uh, where you can see the inside of the lid is a bit different. Um, they are, they're okay to use, however, they do break um, quite easily as well. So, um, None of them really are perfect, to be honest, but um, they tried, they tried. But you see kind of different different designs as well. Um, I'm not going to get into this because today's focus is on Royal Worcester, but do know that other companies have made um, egg coddlers as well. Um, one of the um, big designs that actually have um, spread quite a bit as well and were produced by different companies is uh, uh, the Temple and um, designed by uh, a person called Taylor um, and uh, Temple Crook was their main uh, distributor in the beginning and then it was picked up by other companies but this is this design in the center uh, in the, the second one here um, uh, th that design was patented uh, in the uh, around 19 uh, in, in, in the UK in around 1914 and then in the US in 1916 um, then we have glass version here which is a German manufacturer um, which was designed uh, by a Bauhaus artist in 1933 um, and uh, was produced for a very long time and uh, is actually still, um, well, there's a 
legal issues right now, but uh, was produced until quite recently still. Um, and then uh, a quite modern design for kitchen craft. Um, and uh, you, you have companies that still are producing egg codlers to this day. Kitchen craft still does. Um, and there's a, a Scandinavian company that now um, is called Egg Codler, um, sp spelled with an uh, umlaut A, um, that uh, make uh, actually quite beautiful uh, egg codlers and for the last you know a couple of years now and are trying to bring them back um, as something for people to do. Um, but again, I'm not going to get into these designs. I actually want to start cooking an egg and show you how it's done and then do the Q&A. So um, here's just a little visual um, of uh, how to uh, coddle an egg. So basically, well, you have your egg coddler. Um, you need all you need really is a little bit of butter or some fat, um, an egg and salt. Um, and then if you wanted to, you can add some aromat aromatics, which I will do today or some cheese or whatever. So normally what you do, you kind of put a little bit of grease on the inside, a little bit of butter on the inside. You can use margarine. You can, uh, depending, you know, uh, uh, what you fancy, you could put lard, you could put, um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't use like an oil. Um, I'd probably stick with something a little bit thicker so you can kind of cover it nicely. Then you crack your egg in, put your seasoning in, close it tightly and then put it in um, the boiling water um, and then boil it. In this case, um, I would still boil it because it takes a quite a lot of temperature to get through the coddler. Um, so just putting it in hot water, I have tried it. That is just, it's really hard. Um, and you have to leave it in there for a long time and really keep the water hot then um, for quite a long time as well. So I, I, I do suggest boiling them. Uh, and depending on the size, how many eggs you use, what else you put in there, the time does change. So there is not one fits all answer of how long you boil it. It's a little bit trial and error. It also depends on where you live, how high altitude wise, because it does change. Uh, but generally um, for um, when I do a, a two egg codlers or a large one, I always put one egg in there, not two, but and then I put other stuff in it. Um, I cook it anywhere between eight to 11 minutes, depending on how soft you want your egg. Um, here's a nice little graphic. I know it's in German, but this was actually by um, uh, the uh, uh, coddler, the glass coddler produced in Germany, but I thought it was a really nice visual. So you crack your egg into the in the coddler, you close it, you put it in water, you make sure the water is not above the lid, but below the lid, um, so no water can go inside. Um, so it's just as the height of basically where your egg would stop cook it for in their case they say uh three minutes uh, for soft one five minutes for a long one i would cook it a bit longer than that um but also glass does um act differently than porcelain and then you eat your egg um so i'm uh here's just a couple of pictures if anybody wants to wants to know what these pattern books as well was to look like they are quite big quite heavy and wonderful books so here's just a couple of pictures of me doing research um at the museum with a uh you know, with the pattern books. Um, and that's the end of the um, kind of PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll go on to actually um, cook an egg. And while I do that, I think we can probably already start um, doing some Q&A. Um, so just showing you what I'm doing. So I'm um, still outdoors. So I have a little gas cooker back here. So basically, I just have a pot of water um, with um, boiling water um, that's sitting here, getting nice and hot. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so I get it into a boiling point. And then I have my little egg coddler. So I'll make two today. So I'll make one a little shorter to kind of get that softer quality. And then one that I'll, I'll cook kind of normally uh, temperature or, um, sorry, um, partners that I normally would do. So these are the uh, two egg coddlers. This is just the lid I was mentioning before. So here you have a coddler with a uh, metal uh, where the um, rim is built into the porcelain, where they formed it into the porcelain. And then here you have the metal ring where on the inside you have a little plastic ring with two, they're hard to see here, but two little knobbies that basically lock into this ring. They, they close quite nicely. The problem is, that this ring inside can break quite easily if you are not careful. Definitely don't ever put them in the uh, dishwasher because um, they can't deal with the heat uh, from the dishwasher. It's fine being coddled because you're not really having the hot water up till there, 
but having that ring exposed to the hot water in a dishwasher can break this quite easily. Um, but uh, so I have this one uh, and this coddler, same design, uh, same lid design, um, different kind of uh, coddler designs, one with butterflies and berries, one with cute little birds. Um, so I'll, I'll make these two and I yeah, cook them at different times. Um, I also did want to show this one. This is one of the big ones, the meal ones for four eggs. So you see it's quite, quite a big size difference. Um, so these were made again since 1973. And the idea was to not just ultimately actually not really for coddled eggs, but the idea was more like to actually do small meals in them that maybe include an egg, but have other food as well. So they also always advertise them for baby food, to heat baby food in these um, or small meals for like, um, you know, like a stew or mashed potatoes or something like that you can heat up in here, um, which actually works quite well. So to make the coddled egg, I have my butter. So I just basically, um, well, my butter is a bit, it's very, quite cold out here, so it's a bit hard, but it will work. Um, I take my butter, you can use it with a knife. I actually find a spoon quite easy because it kind of gets you in the bottom where it's round inside. Um, and you just smear your butter into the coddler. Make sure you get also some on the bottom. What the, what the butter does, but first of all, it does add flavor. Um, and But it also helps for the egg white not to stick too much to the to the coddler. I mean, the idea is not that you get the egg out of the coddler. Um, so this is not an egg poacher in that sense where you poach an egg and you actually get it out and then you just have the egg, you know, and you can add it onto your English muffin for egg Benedict or whatever. The idea with the coddler really is that you eat it out of the coddler, not that you get the whole thing out um, and put it on something else. Um, but the egg white can still stick quite a bit to the sides. Um, so it does loosen better if you put the, the butter in there. But again, it also adds some nice flavor, to be honest. Then you have your eggs. Just grab two eggs. Um, and again, um, even though these are two egg colors, so these are large ones, I only put only one egg in there that allows me to add something else, but also... Our eggs nowadays are bigger than eggs used to be uh, on the standard. So the standard eggs that most of us buy these days are probably large. Um, and that was not the standard back in the day. So um, if you get an extra large egg, for example, um, chances are it will actually not fit into a one egg coddler. And even with the large ones, you sometimes might have problems, especially if you want to add a bit of cheese or something else. So um, I always suggest to use a two egg coddler, even for one egg that gives you room for little stuff to add to it ham cheese whatever you want to do um so i'm going to just crack my my egg open plop it in there so this is just egg going into let's see let's show you egg going into my coddler here so i have the butter in there and i have the egg in there i'm going to do the other one quickly as well move this down a little bit you can see what i'm doing so there's there's my coddler there's my egg just plop it right in there again if you're afraid of, of shells what you can do you can always put it into a little bowl beforehand to check make sure you have no no shells in there and and then put it in there so here are my two eggs with my coddlers with the two eggs in there and in my case now since i am in italy i'm gonna make um, them a bit Italian with um, adding some uh, fresh rosemary that's growing here um, outside the house where I'm staying and some pecorino cheese. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I do like salt in my eggs. Then I have some pecorino cheese, which I'm just going to add in there as well. You can put the cheese on the bottom. You can put the cheese on the top. Um, I'm just going to add it on the top here for now, put the cheese in there, and then I have some rosemary, so some really nice um, fresh rosemary from the garden here, so I'm going to put some of that on top as well, 
and then close the lids. If you have older coddlers, always make sure you keep the lid with the coddler because not all lids fit all coddlers necessarily. So always make sure you keep your lids and your coddlers together. Um, and then here I have, I'm gonna get up for a second to put them in there. Um, so I have my boiling water back here. And again, it's important that the water literally only, so my egg is goes until about here right now. So I'm gonna have my hot water basically just until there, not higher, definitely never above the lid. And then set it in there. And be careful that if you add more coddlers, obviously water rises. So do um, make sure you don't um, get your water too high and we just put them in there. And then I'm gonna set the timer. So I'm gonna take one out after, um, so what they often say in these uh, um, instructions is do two minutes longer than you normally would cook an egg. So um, when I do a soft boiled egg like this, um, putting it in boiling water normally would do five minutes. So two minutes more would be seven minutes. Um, I'm, I'm going to do eight um, for one and then I'll do 10 for the other. Um, so I'll set the timer now. They're boiling back there. Um, doing their thing and then we'll see so while we're waiting for eight minutes um if you want to start the uh q a fiona do we have any questions we okay do. we do i will <laughs> find the questions so um okay uh so Right. Uh, is there a recommended food safe adhesive if the rim separates from the porcelain? Yes. So I'm just going to show this here quickly. So if you have your coddler of this variety with the metal ring um, like you have here, um, what happens sometimes, especially if you have, uh, again, um, this happens very often. Uh, Often, if you if people wash them in the dishwasher, so generally I recommend never ever put a coddle in a dishwasher. Um, that's not a good place for them, um, and it does uh, it can break the plastic um, uh, lids, and it can uh, really uh, break basically or, or um, damage the adhesive that's in here and pop it out. However, also sometimes age the adhesives that they used um some were better some were not so good depending also when and where the coddler was made um, so if it comes off um there are ways to get the rim back i'm going to put a disclaimer here because fact is officially there is not really such thing as a food safe adhesive okay so you will not find an adhesive out there that says specifically that it's food safe, okay? So uh, uh, for, you know, whatever, the, all the different reasons, they can't actually say it. So fact is though, that the adhesive that they use here in the first place, were not really considered probably food safe nowadays either, which is, I think, one of the reasons why Royal well, Worcester actually did change their desi design to the, the coddlers that I'm currently cooking, where they don't have this rim because of the food safety issue. So um, having said that, there are adhesives that work really well to glue them back on um, that I have used that would be the same type of adhesive. So um, I myself consider them for myself food safe because I know they work and I know they're not gonna actually, they're not affecting the flavor, they're not really leaking, they're not doing anything but it's not something where I can say there is this adhesive you can use that's food safe. It just doesn't as such exist. Um, the one that worked, I have found that works the best for me um, and you just have to be very careful when you use it um, is basically a two compound um, adhesive uh, made by Gorilla Glue. Um, Gorilla Glue makes amazing glues. Um, they work really well on very different um, uh, materials. Um, and they have a, a 
uh, two compound glue. So it's one of the syringes where you kind of mix them together um, like a cement um, that works really well. It is proof to high temperature. Um, so it, it uh, can be boiled as we're doing right now. It can go in hot water. It will not damage. Uh, it will stick. Um, it can deal with the pressure of you opening up the, the coddler and all of that um, and won't break. And I have not found it to, like I said, leak in any way or change the taste. After you glue it, the only thing that you need to do is just let it sit for a while and air out because initially it does smell. Um, you let it air out, wash the coddler a few times once it's nice and set, and then just use it. But again, officially not food safe. Thank you, Cordula. Um, then we've got Fernando, who's joining us from the States, who says, um, please, could you comment on the quality of the eggs cooked on mass versus singular? Um, boy, uh, sorry, um, quality of I eggs? I think it's around, um, is there any difference between coddling one egg? or Oh, coddling, OK, now I understand, sorry. Eggs? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, again, I I normally, I mean, I've done definitely two eggs in a coddler. Um, it does work. You, it does change your cooking time drastically because you have more mass in the, in the coddler. So even if you use the two egg coddler right now, one egg in there, it's a different timing than I, if I would put two eggs in there because you have much more mass in there. So you have to adjust your, your, your cooking time. Again, um, Cooking times are really difficult to say there's a fixed time because it depends on the egg size. It depends on are you using an egg fresh out of the fridge or you can using an egg at room temperature. Um, these are all variables. So really what, what, what you have to do is for yourself. And again, it also sometimes changes altitude wise where you are. If you're high up in the mountains, egg does take longer to cook. Uh, that's a reality. So than if you're at you know sea level. Um, so I think what you have to do figure out is for where you are with the eggs you use find that time and then just use that as your standard um and uh you know and then and and again everybody likes the eggs a bit different some like them harder some like them softer um and uh uh but one versus two i don't think that makes a difference you just have to adjust your cooking time um and then uh they also say, would it make sense that the coddlers, the ceramic coddlers were preheated with hot water prior to adding the eggs? I don't really see a benefit to that, to be honest, because all it does now is actually starts cooking the egg that's touching the hot side quicker, but not necessarily the inside. So I don't think that really makes a difference. I'd rather have the heat probably move in evenly from the outside in as I'm putting it in um, because otherwise as you're putting it in you're already starting to cook egg what what you have to keep in mind egg cooks at quite a low temperature so um, egg white cooks around 70 degrees celsius I'm talking celsius so for anybody who does Fahrenheit sorry that you have to figure that one out for yourself and um, so at 70, 70 degrees celsius egg white cooks at um 80 uh, degrees fahrenheit egg yolk cooks so it's it's quite it's not that high of a temperature actually this is why the coddling process where you don't put it in boiling water but put just really hot water over it and let it sit it actually cooks the egg because if the water temperature stays at 70 degrees you cook your egg just fine and so if you preheat the the egg coddler and if you preheat it too hot and the outside is already this hot, it immediately starts cooking whatever that first layer close to the wall is quite quickly. And I don't know if that then cooks it too quickly because I think that might get them too hard before actually the heat goes into the egg yolk. But I, I haven't tried it before, so I'm just guessing here. <laughs> um, Laurie says, do you have a favorite um, pattern from your collection? Sorry, that was my that was my timer. I just need to take the first egg out. So give me just one second. That was my first eight minutes. So I'm just going to put it on again in another two minutes. While you're doing that, I'm going to answer um, a question, uh, which is really for, for Kate or myself. Um, setting a lovely table with beautiful tableware is really a treat. 
which design is the most popular today. So um, Contemporary Royal Worcester, which is now made by Port Merion, um, the plain white serendipity is very popular, um, as is the Renda, Rendale range, um, which has uh, cute animals on a white background. Um, from Vintage Royal Worcester, um, Eversham is still um, a firm favourite. Okay, um, so I have one egg cutler out. I'm going to let it sit there for, until the second one comes out. So I'll show you both at the same time, if that's all right. So I think in primary, because I have two minutes or one minute, I can do one more question in the meantime. Um, so we have, um, which is your favorite Royal, Royal Worcester cuddler pattern? Oh, oh that's, oh, oh, that's a very okay. difficult one. Um, from the more modern ones, um, I probably do like um, this one um, really well because it has those cute little birds. Um, so it has a little red robin um, on there and stuff. So I, I really like that one um, a lot. This is a very modern kind of pattern. Um, I am very partial to actually the um pre-royal Worcester uh kind of the when it was Granger when Granger was making them so I showed one of example during the presentation early on with this kind of blue design on it I really like those um they have some really they did some lovely lovely designs back then um quite uh, they're always single color really and just beautiful floral or geometric designs on there which I really like um, and as impractical as the flat lid was, I really like the flat lid, um, lid from an aesthetic point of view. <laughs> so um, I like those. But other than that, um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite. I think it depends on my mood. So yeah, I I yeah. use I I don't use the same one every time. So it's normally I make when I make a cuddle egg. I kind of go like, oh, which color do I want to use today? And I use, you know, different ones. You that know, sounds fun. Christmassy that ones for Christmas, fun. Eastery ones for Easter, you know, summery ones for summer, that kind of thing. So um yeah, I don't really think I have one particular and this is this favorite. is a great question for uh for closing on when you've once you've shown us your eggs. Are there any other questions or avenues of research that you still want to explore for the cuddlers? Oh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I, I'm going to tip my screen down again so you can see better. So these are my two um, egg coddlers. So this is the one I cooked for eight minutes. This is the one I cooked for 10 minutes. And um, one thing I should mention, these are actually are different materials. So this one is much lighter. So it's actually um, a, a different type of ceramic that they used than they used on this one. Um, so which will also affect your time um, and you cook them. And again, if you have older coddlers that are made for maybe crownware or whatever, again, the material changes um, as well of how, how long you have to cook them. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm gonna open this one first. So again, this one was cooked for eight minutes. So if you say soft boiled egg, so they normally recommend um, uh, in the old ads, uh, I would like a normal uh, soft boiled egg plus two minutes. So I did plus three minutes. And in there, you see it is actually, so it's still a little soft. Let me see if I can go in there. It's still a little soft on the top. So if you don't have a problem, I'll take it out with some of the egg yolks, still uh, egg white still being a bit, as they said, gelatinous, um, then this is fine. However, the egg white on the bottom, I'll take a piece out is actually quite hard so um uh, uh, there we go it's quite hard so the way i eat it when i do an coddled egg at this point i actually just stir it anyways so the kind of softer bits and the harder bits mix up and it becomes this really nice egg mush but you have a nice uh soft uh, egg yolk which is what i like and the egg white, even that tiny bit of still somewhat gelatinous in the egg white is now so mixed in you actually don't um, get it really in your in your mouth. Uh, it's just a beautiful egg mush. But so here you have now the egg uh, mixed with the cheese, mixed with the rosemary, um, egg yolk, egg white, it's all in there and it's, it smells absolutely delicious. Um, and then this is the other one. So this one was now um 
uh, 10 minutes. So eight minutes versus 10 minutes. I'll just take another spoon, one second. So this one is definitely harder on the top. Um, there's nothing really gelatinously in there now. This is really is a, um, you know, cooked egg white, how we would define cooked egg white. But if I go in there, the egg yolk is still soft. And this is how I like it. I, I'm When it comes to coddled egg, I don't really want a hard egg yolk. I want a soft egg yolk. So for me, 10 minutes normally works really well. If I put a lot of other stuff in there, so sometimes I like to put maybe some mushrooms in there or if uh, I, I don't eat meat, but if you're a meat eater, you want to put some ham or some bacon in there. If you put more in there, I would probably add another minute if you put a lot in there. Because again, volume changes the, uh, um, the um, how long you need to cook it. Um, so if you put a lot of other stuff in there, maybe give it another minute and uh, bring it up to 11. But this is now uh, 10 minutes. And this is, to me, an absolutely perfect coddled egg. Um, yeah, I could eat that right now. Um, so egg yolk is soft. Egg white is cooked. Um, and perfect to take some uh, bread soldier. So, you know, um, toasted breads, dipping it in there, eating it. Perfect. So can people find... Um more of your egg coddling recipes on your instagram page cordula and <laughs> um, yeah I, so I, I have some on my instagram page i have to say i have been a bit um neglective of my instagram um so i do have an instagram called the coddled egg um and uh, i started that when i started the research um but um following this talk now maybe i really need to get back into it and add some some more recipes but i mean royal worcester basically they always came out with a standard little recipe book uh with all the coddlers you know the standard really is adding cheese adding ham adding some fresh herbs is always good um, in the springtime, if you live anywhere where they um, grow wild garlic or uh, in America called, um, what's it called? Uh, Ram Ramson? Yeah, Ramson. So wild garlic or Ramson, um, you know, get some of that in there. It's absolutely delicious. Um, some veg vegetables, some fresh tomatoes, some peppers. Um, if you go to the um, website of Egg Coddler, that Scandinavian company that started making egg coddlers again recently, they um, actually share a lot of uh, recipes um, on their website or on their Instagram, which is always fun. They, they try some more kind of quirky things. Um, but uh, yeah, so Royal Worcester Standard, like I said, cheese, ham and cheese, fresh herbs. Um, they also do one they have a coddler specifically advertised for cheese fondue, where they just put actually, and, and, the, and the recipes on the coddler itself, um, where you put your cheese and your, your um, um, uh, seasonings and then a little bit of kirsch in there to actually make a Swiss cheese fondue. Um, it works actually really well. <laughs> I've done it a few times with some Gruyere cheese, some kirsch, some salt. Um, and you're ready to go for a little cheese fondue out of a out of an egg coddler. Um, but yeah, um, I I um, I'm a big fan of Middle Eastern cooking. I lived in the Middle East for a long time. So um, if you like shakshuka, which is basically eggs cooked in like a tomato base, um, that goes really well in the coddler as well. So putting some tomatoes, some kind of uh, herbs, uh, garlic, whatever in there with the egg and cooking that absolutely delicious bit of feta cheese, really nice spinach and egg always goes well um and if you want more of a meal with a big one but it, they do work with the two egg one as well a bit of mashed potatoes a bit of cheese and an egg super <laughs> you wow. got the meal going well looking in the chat everyone is now ravenous um wishes they'd done a cook along and <laughs> they're going to dig out the egg coddlers that have been um that need rescuing from the backs of kitchen cupboards so <laughs> definitely do. inspired us um I just I just have somebody um because that 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 happens quite a bit. Sorry, one question that somebody was asking is um is said I have bought vintage egg coddlers which have fine cracks in it. I do didn't use them for food, but I'm wondering how to prevent this. Um, if you have an egg coddler that has a crack in it, please don't use it. Okay, uh, chances are at some point from the stress of the hot water it will break and it will break while you're cooking it and it, 
the worst thing that can happen is it breaks while you're eating, you're trying to eat out of it. So if your egg collar has a crack, it's it's done for. You can use it as a display thing in your cabinet, but please don't use it for cooking your eggs. Um, the egg cutlers are put on a lot of stress every time they're putting in hot water. And especially if you have older ones, because Royal Worcester obviously changed their porcelain and their mixture throughout the years. They have, um, I mean, they have done amazing work in, in, you know, and they're inventing different kind of materials and how to make their porcelain fireproof and whatnot. Um, and they are getting or it did get better over the years um, with making these cutlers more and more fireproof and heat proof. But if you have an older one, um, depending on the age, um, you know, they might just not after, you know, after all these years be in a position to really be used anymore. So the ones I have from Granger years, so, you know, older than uh, from the 19th century, basically, I'm not using them at all. They don't have cracks. They're fine, but I still won't use them because the chances of them eventually cracking um, are just for me too high. Um if you if you're want to be a bit more careful, don't put the egg cutlet directly in the pot. Um, maybe put like something on the bottom first, like even if it's just some kitchen towel or whatever, so they're not directly touching the hot bottom of the pot. That actually helps with the heat a little bit. It's this touching the heat on the bottom that can crack the um, egg cutler. Um, but yeah, once they're cracked, um, they're done for. Um, and the only thing to prevent it is be careful with them. Um, don't put them in the dishwasher, um, you know, be careful when you put them in and um, take them out. Um, and when you open them, don't ever open them on the little ring here that will break eventually. That's not what it's meant for. This ring is really just there to take it in and out of the water, not to use um, to open them. So do open them properly. But again, don't hold them too tight because that can also break the porcelain. Um, so my suggestion there is don't tighten them too much since you're not putting water over the lid you should never have to tighten the cuddler that much if you can't open it just enough so it, the lid sits on it securely but but that's about it thank you thank you very much Gordula. sorry i was trying to find the, the unmute button um, that was fantastic. It was amazing. Really fascinating. I understand a huge amount more about egg coddlers now. And even to see you cooking, I was, it's made me hungry. I'm ready <laughs> to go and try an egg coddler with some herbs. So thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that's joined us this evening. There have been some brilliant questions. It's been amazing to have you here um, and to share in the joy of egg 